Good morning, Marymount sports fans. This is Rob Ebel with ESP Media. We're here with Tom Neural to kick off our fall season podcast. Coach, how are you? I'm well, Rob. How about you? Good seeing you again. Yeah, we had a little bit of a hiatus. We had some staffing issues, and we had to hit the yep. pause button on the AD podcast. And uh, we just decided to let's let's get these back going because everybody loves them, and it's just. Uh, Great information for your fans and your student athletes, and we'll do do these for eight weeks and uh, get some great information out there on Warrior Sports. How's that sound? Sounds good. And we got the boss doing it, so even better. That's great. <laughs> um, one of the nice things about fall is you kind of stagger your starts with your sports. Uh, golf and tennis, girls' tennis, are uh, well underway. And uh, how about t telling the fans just kind of where things are with golf, with boys and girls' golf for the uh, Warriors? Yeah, boys and girls' golf are off to a off to a great start. Uh, the boys won the Madeira Invitational last week. Uh, that was following up finishing second in the CHL preview with the varsity. So two really good starts from a team with one senior. Um Really excited. It's a very young team. Uh, we've seen these guys coming up for the last couple of years, but really excited to see what they're doing. And uh, Coach Callaway has he has a cast and he's just rotating through. So he's got eight golfers and uh, the the top the top six you know carry on each week and bottom two fall out and have to earn their spot back. Um, so a lot of good competition there. But I'm really excited to see what what this bunch is going to do. And, and the girls are off to a good start as well. Um, finished second in their in their in their season opener and then third at country day and, and charlotte solar is just uh, blazing it right now with two second place finishes in both her meets and so uh, that was a really strong meet of our of our golfers coming back three of them are back from last year and we have six golfers on the girls team so that's growing as well in emerging sports well, that's exciting so it is it is and it's always nice to add them and they're, and they're picking up athletes and so that's fun and uh, also on the girls side uh, we had a junior high girls golf a couple of years ago. And so we have, I think, eight girls involved with that to partner with the boys. So fantastic! Uh, it is, it is just to, to grow the program that way and, and lifelong sports. And so those are both doing um, very well. And then our, our tennis team over the weekend went up and played, uh, I believe, Upper Arlington and Wellington School, I think, were the two that they had and took a 4-1 okay. match on uh, on Friday. And they they've started off. Uh, really strong as well in the matches that they've had last week. And uh, hopefully the rain stays away uh, today because the Marymount courts have recently been renovated um, all the way down to the, to the bare surface. So the girls would really like to open that up with Kings today with a W. So um, and they look great, by the way, I drove by them and those courts look fantastic. They do right there, right there on the corner. And, uh, and it's a great place to play. A lot of people stop by and see uh, 30 girls playing tennis. And so a big team. And uh, and and uh, they they all went to districts last year, and we graduated too. And so uh, coach is really excited about that as well. So get them going as well. So rain stay away, and we won't have any makeups. That's and nice so that uh, your numbers are up. That has to be gratifying for you as the director of athletics to uh, know that uh, you have student athletes that are interested in participating and they're competing at a high level, and it, and you've got got full numbers because that's not not the case all, all around the city. No, it's not. And it, we're especially seeing that around the city with girls sports, just the numbers declining. And so they're all they're all playing some kind of sports. But as you said, our, our coaches do a great job getting the kids involved, just really building a team atmosphere with that. Um, and so, yeah, the, the boys numbers, we, we've dropped a couple, but we still have two full teams for boys golf and the girls climbing and, and then tennis being as strong as it is. So um, that, that's fun to see. And our, our football and boys soccer numbers are through the roof. So. Um, how, yeah, how, important, how good is it? How important is it for you to have returning coaches like Coach Callaway? That's got to be, you know, for continuity from your standpoint and running, you know, because each sport is like their own little business unit. And it's got to be helpful to you to have returning coaches at the varsity level. It, it really is um, really at any level because the, the kids get to know the coaches. And as you said, continuity and you know, anytime, especially on the varsity level, when you bring a new coach in, it's a four-year program. And sure. um, it, it, um, Bear Bryant always said he had a five-year program. You know, he was going, he's going to recruit the first two. He's going to play for a league championship. He's going to win a national title and then be on probation. But in high school, it's it's a little bit different because, you know, the coach has to come in and, and set their philosophy, get them down, get to know the kids. 
and then and then get things in place and then years three and four when they get comfortable you can you can start competing and then start uh, competing to win and, and so with just having the continuity here the kids get to know them they know how they work and you're not proving yourself and so we're really fortunate to have no a, a coaching staff that's been in place for a while that's great you know one of the things that i realized a, a few years ago talking about cross country is how many student athletes participate in cross country and it's um it, it's just uh i didn't realize it i guess because I, I i recovered i uh covered a couple meets and i was like my goodness look at all the student athletes out here running it's yeah. it's it's you know it does it's not as many as football but there are sure a lot of student athletes that uh boys and girls that run cross country you know and we're we're a small school so we're a division three school um division five for football um, so that means we have about 500 kids in our school. And so when you when you figure you have between boys and girls, you have 60, 70 kids running across country. That, that's that's a big number, you know, and 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 that's really again a sport like cross country, like wrestling. You know, those are really and I don't want to call them cult sports, but they kind of build a cult amongst wow. themselves or uh, family is a better word for it. Um, just because they're they're together all the time. They build a really really build a really good spirit for each other and, and pull for each other. And as we get into the season, the kids start having personal records and they all celebrate it very right. well. And our coaches have done a great job um, promoting that and then building that, that late, that late season success. Um, but it's really great to see in the running culture as well. Not all the, the kids come in and a lot of them just change from other sports for, they like the time commitment for, for a soccer or football or, you know, their bodies wore down or they had an injury and they sure. just wanted to do something. It's a lifetime sport like swimming is, and, and they can always run. And, um, you know, you need a pair of shoes and, and, and a track. I, I guess you don't even need shoes. Some kids can run barefoot. Right. Uh, you know, and they're always out and running, but, but just to see that build over the summer and, and God bless them because I would see them out, um, you know, running in the summer Around town. Like, yeah. weeks when we have a hundred degree days or, or I walked, the, I walked the little Miami trail. And so every Wednesday, yeah, we'd see Turpin out there. Another day's Anderson's out there. Another day, here comes Milford. Our our kids run around Marymount um, mm -hmm. on some different trails and some different paths as well, so they don't have to go down to the trail. But just just all of them going out and you know they're they're talking about everything. Just just really yeah, building. It's, it's a great well, building. best of luck to them as their season gets going for these meets. But it's uh, it's a it, it it takes a lot of folks to uh, to support the cross country teams with all those kids, and it's uh, yeah. it's, it's great to see. It is. Let's uh, let's talk girls volleyball, uh, yep. another huge sport in the in the in the USA, and um, you know it seems like uh, volleyball has become a year round sport. You know, with uh, with all the club. Yeah, yeah I, I think a lot of them are fortunately or unfortunately. But if you have that passion for your sport and you want to play it all the time, by all means. And uh, you know, we've been fortunate here. Um, we're actually benefiting the Marymount. A rec association added rec volleyball about four years ago. And so okay. what that means is our, our grade school kids are getting introduced to the sport before they come to junior high. Sure. And in the past, we have a couple of kids that would play club and then they come to junior high. And so they're two, three years behind everyone else. But now with those kids getting that introduction in the elementary school, they come to junior high um, already knowing how to play volleyball. And then when we get to high school, instead of having one or two years experience, They've got two, three, four, five years experience nice, and makes a big difference. You're seeing a difference. Of tryouts. Oh, and nice. yeah, just the skill level. I mean, things they can do now and, 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 and try out for on the first day is so much different than it was five years ago. And, and our numbers are up. Um, we've, we've got full squads on, on all four levels, seventh, Great. eighth grade, RC and JV. And we only graduate, graduated two seniors last year. And so we, uh, I believe we have six seniors this year, which is the most we've had in volleyball uh, in about four or five years. Again, the continuity of having a coach in place for five years. Um, they, they get to know we had tremendous camp numbers for our youth camp this year and um, just really looking forward uh, to what they're going to do this year. They're going to open up on Saturday at home with Bethel Tate. Mm -hmm. uh, and then and then next week's a busy week for them with Seven Hills Indian Hill coming in. Uh, so they get after it pretty quickly. And uh, it'll, it'll be fun to see what they can do. They're excited. We've got some big hitters coming back in our program, uh, which is really going to be exciting as we get into seniors. That's big, Tom, to, to, uh, to, uh, you know, with, with a, a program. And I, I think that sounds like an exciting season for them. It really let's, is. 
with um, <clears throat> with the success of FC Cincinnati in town, uh, do you think there's a correlation to the numbers uh, in high school soccer? Because everywhere I go, I, it just seems like uh, soccer is is the sport right now. Well, it, it certainly gets more attention, and then yeah. and then you're in a World Cup year as well with the women, so that always seems to heighten the awareness with it. But you know, with with the FC, I mean, they're they're packing twenty five grand in there. Uh, for every home match and it's just it's just crazy the environment down there not just in the stadium but around the stadium and and our boys numbers have always been really strong we we graduated 12 girls 12 seniors last year out of our girls program okay. uh and it was a very talented it was a very yes, talented was. group with a number of uh three regional appearances and a district finals appearance with that bunch but because of that because when you you have a group like that you know uh, the kids are smart and, you know, they, they want to play and they want to get in games. And so you lose uh, maybe not so many kids coming out in the class before and the class after. And so the follow-up to that is I believe we have three seniors on our girls team this okay. year. Uh, and the numbers are down a little bit. Like you said, like I said earlier across the city, um, there's, there's a number of programs that just don't have girls JV this year. So, so we'll fill in some gaps with those and, and we're, we're, we got about 32, so we're fine. We've had two full squads. Sure. And varsity has had some really good scrimmages so far with uh, with Carroll. They have seven hills tonight. They went up to uh, Worthington and and scrimmaged earlier. Uh, really good showings early on for right. for a young team. So uh, Coach Haney and his staff are really excited as we get into this to start off. And uh, the the girls will open their season next Tuesday, the regular season next Tuesday with Ross here at home. Um, they, like I said, they had a, a tune up inner squad tune up over the weekend. They'll have seven Hills in a scrimmage tonight. The boys get after it tomorrow night, uh, with Bethel Tate on the JV level, Georgetown on the varsity level, and there's 52 boys out there. So that's almost as many as our football team sure. and they're really on it. Yeah, they are. They've had some really good scrimmages early on. Uh, just a lot of depth for splitting our JV into a JVA, JVB, uh, just to try to work it out that we can keep all those good kids for playing time. It keeps everybody on the field and, you know, it, it does. Gets better. Yeah. You know, and kind of split it up and, you know, the, the way the schedule falls out, there's, there's always some programs that maybe won't be as competitive as ours. And so we can find some B teams sure. and get our freshmen some more games that way. Um, and so they, you know, no one plays a full schedule on that, but they still get a lot of PT, still get their work and still get the full coaching that everyone else gets. Yeah. But the boys are the boys are very excited about what they have coming up. And like I said, Bethel Tate and Georgetown tomorrow. They'll have Seven Hills on Saturday. They'll have Ross next week. So they get after it pretty quick in the get go, and it's going to be a good start for them. No so question. really looking forward um, for them to challenge for a league title and possibly a district title. Yeah, that's exciting. And the girls set you know uh, last year's team certainly set the bar. So I'm yeah. sure the girls that were on the team want want you know they don't want that that bar to drop. So they're going to work hard, uh, those seniors to uh, try to keep things going. So that's pretty yeah. exciting. And there's, a, and there's a few starters back from last year's team. So yeah, they're ready to, they're ready to go. They're going to be, they're going to be fun to watch. They, they always do a good job with our yeah, girls. That's great. Well, let's wrap this uh, session up with, uh, Marymount football. I know it, uh, let's see. Yeah. we got them all covered football. Uh, let's talk about the, the gridiron and uh, what's in store for the Warriors this year, coach. Yeah, the Warriors have a big squad of uh, 55 kids, and so we've rebounded from some small numbers well, last that's a year. nice number. It, it, it really is uh, for ours, and um, the, the skill levels are out. Not not a whole lot of depth uh, within there for varsity starters, but um, the guys that we have, we feel pretty good about. C uh, Coach Leon has done a really good job just just formulating them, and, and their, their motto is family, and so the kids really embrace that. And we went out to New Richmond on, on Friday – Pretty much played the varsity for a half and had a really good half with New Richmond. Uh, we struggled at New Richmond last year. Last year, in three of our first five games, we 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 uh, we lost the lead late in the game, late third quarter and fourth quarter. Uh, and so, trying to avoid those pitfalls, uh, but a really good showing there today. Very few penalties in that scrimmage. Uh, um, our quarterback's coming back after after missing the whole year last year with an injury. Okay. Uh, he was the receiver. He's firing really well. Kids just really look good. And so we're really excited to get things started this Friday. It'll be here at Kuzel Stadium. It's our Hall of Fame night. We're putting four alumni in to our Hall of okay. Fame. And it's always um, you know, Friday nights okay, around night. here. Game Thank nights are always special when you get back into Kuzel Stadium on Tom Crosby Field. So 
Uh, Best press so, box in the city you made. We thank you. I had lots of room and uh, you know, usually good food in there as well. So we like everyone having room in there. So good place I to think, be. Uh, I think the league uh, football in the league is going to be quite even this year. I think it's going to be a fun uh, league season. Uh, yeah, I hope so. I mean, it was, you know, it, it was pretty, um, it, it started off level last year and then, and then things got shaken up a little bit, but yeah, I, I, I think it is. And so, um, you know, we got three weeks to figure everything out. Everyone does. And uh, yeah, I, I will give a, a shout out to my alma mater. The Cavaliers over on Hackberry street will open sure. up uh, with Deer Park on Friday, which is literally Purcell's first home game ever um, building a new stadium there. So in the 93 year history, um pretty like exciting said, right yeah former ad former baseball coach there um so so excited for those guys so we'll give the cavaliers a little shout out of marymont time today yeah it's great hey let's wrap up with uh your memorial golf outing on october 5th the john hubbard just a little yeah. shout out I, I saw that on the website and i thought we'd give them a little plug yeah you know everything you can find about our about our athletic department is on marymontsports.com the website but the Hubbard Memorial, um, this is, uh, we're 35 years into this, I guess, with the Hubbard Memorial. It's our booster's largest fundraiser of the year. There's all kinds of sponsorship levels, uh, uh, pack, player packages, everything else. If you want to have your logo on the golf ball, the tournament, if you want to sponsor the technology for the event, that event will raise about uh, $25,000. For our athletic department, and it's at Terrace Park this year, uh, a very friendly course, very beautiful course, mm -hmm. especially that time of year in early October. The right on the banks of the, the Little Miami, and uh, and, and with the trees turning that time, so a lot of opera, a lot of sponsorship opportunities. It's a great get together. Our boosters do a tremendous job for us. And all the information on that is at MarymontSports.com. So anybody's interested, hop on board and uh, get signed up on that. Tom, it's great to see you. And uh, we'll touch base with you next week. Best of luck to all the Warrior teams getting started or already underway. And uh, thanks again. We'll touch base next week. Thank you for the people out there. We meet the team night Wednesday night, uh, 7 o'clock in the stadium. Come on up and you'll see all of our athletes. Rob, thank you. Good to see you, Tom. Take care. All right, Rob. Thanks. Bye.